Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, Episode 89. Today's episode of the podcast features an interview with Lynn Ocherik, founder of O-Vision Consulting, on the subject of learning to fail. I agree with Lynn and Jen. Learning to fail successfully is a very important skill. Recently, I was so intent on mastering failure that I enrolled in a graduate program in the field. But when I failed two courses before I even got to my thesis, they dropped me from the program. I'm currently appealing having been failed on a technicality, and I think I'm going to win. Hey, this is Jen Swanson, and you're listening to the Communication Diva Podcast. This is the podcast that hopes to help you deepen your relationships both at work or at home through new communication skills, ideas, ways of being, things to inspire you to learn, to grow, and hopefully some entertainment along the way. If you are interested at all in telling your story through the medium of podcasting, please be sure to check out the Libsyn promo that is on the website that allows you to have up to two months of free podcast hosting. There are also a number of resources and information on the resource page that can help you to get started if podcasting is something that you are interested in doing. Also, this month, July 1st to the 31st, 2014 only, the product that I have on public speaking, Public Speaking Success, the Communication Diva's Guide to Presenting with Confidence, is offered to you on a pay-what-you-want basis. So you are welcome to go to the products page and to click on, uh, on the information there and you will see the sales page for the five-part downloadable MP3 series that helps you to make your next presentation shine. And the cost to you that is normally a $97 value is whatever you feel like paying for it. So make an offer, put that in, and I will happily receive anything that you are willing to pay for this. I would ask that if you enjoy it and you like it, that you send me a note and let me know that. And uh, this is my happy birthday to me, to you, because it is my birthday month this July. So today I have a wonderful interview for you with Lynn Ocherik. And Lynn is a consultant and a uh, specialist in engagement and helping people to figure out their purpose and follow their passion. And she is going to be talking to me today about the idea of failure, the idea of risk taking, the ideas of resiliency, and she is going to give you some practical tips to take away with you uh, right away that you can do to start uh, reaching your goals and getting yourself on track to where you hope to be. So I am going to turn this over to you right now, and here is Lynn. Hey everyone, this is Jen and welcome to the Communication Diva podcast. If you hear birds in the background, it's because we're sitting in our podcast studio and we've got the window and the door open and the birds are out there singing and it's a beautiful sunny Vancouver day. And I am here with Lynn Ocherik, and I must say that this is our second try at this episode because I got a bunch of new equipment. I don't know if you can tell the difference in the sound quality, but uh, the first time I plugged the wires in incorrectly and completely failed. And after I'd left Lynn's house, I came home and many hours later checked the podcast episode and to my horror, it was gone. So uh, it's very ironic because our topic today is learning how to fail well. (laughs) So welcome, Lynn. Let's try this again. Hey, Jen. This is actually, I thought that was excellent that we (laughs) went through that whole process the first time. And when I saw your note, I was, well, how could it get any better than that? We're going to start our whole conversation with all of your listeners on, all right, We set out and we did it right off the bat. Did one failure, figured out, learned from it, and then kept on going, which is amazing. You're very gracious. And I I thank you for taking the time to come back because, yeah, I tell you, 
it doesn't feel nice to fail, does it? You know, sometimes it's uncomfortable. That's, you know, the whole point of our conversation today is, okay, so it isn't the most amazing thing. We don't walk around saying, hey, I think I'm going to set it up so that I might be able to fail and see what happens. No, of course not. That's, uh, That's not what the starting point is for most of us. But what are the amazing things that come out of it? What's the learning that happens? And how can you turn that around and make it so that you really are going to be able to move yourself forward in a new way, a way that's going to be even bigger and better than before. That's what it's all about. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we'll talk about that. And this episode's going to be even better than the last one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so tell us how you got started with this um, engagement strategy stuff and helping people to take risks and and all of the wonderful things that you do. Yeah, for sure. You know, an interesting thing, uh, many, many years ago, I started in uh, with a large advertising and communications company, uh, totally creative based. They were big and they were working on, you know, how can we stretch out and do the biggest ideas you could imagine, surprise everybody. And I have to say that was the perfect training ground for seeing what happens when you do one uh, create bigger risks. What does that look like? And then the other side, what happens when you see that things don't work out and there are a lot of failures and, um, and yet the environment was always, don't be afraid of those failures. Okay. We're going to promote a place where culturally that's what it's all about. We got to keep stretching out further and further. And from that, you realize very quickly that there are skill sets that you can learn. There are tools and skill sets you you are able to apply, whether you are this amazing creative person, which I believe everybody is anyway, but, you know, in other confines, how do you take that from one environment and now move it into your life or your business or, you know, with your children, wherever it is, uh, because it's so incredibly important. So I think... For the, for the majority of us, we, uh, especially today, you know, we're in environments where if we look at the economy, the shifts that have happened, it's been pretty radical. There's There's been a lot of things that have been up and down. People maybe don't feel as comfortable as they did before. Uh, in that, I think as a society, we have started to become a little bit risk averse. We're, we're afraid of failing in a lot of ways. Um, The interesting thing about that is, you know, a lot of times when you see things become more uncomfortable or more unpredictable, we tighten up. We, our tendency is to say, well, we need to do the thing that's going to be safe. We're going to put our heads down. We're going to follow the path that we did before. It's going to be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine if I keep doing things the same way. And the reality is that that's exactly the moment when you need to say, okay, stop. I'm going to take a look at this. And chances are, I'm going to have to stretch out. I'm going to have to be uncomfortable. I'm going to have to try things in a new way that maybe doesn't feel like it did before. And that is tough. That is not an easy thing. It's I don't scary. It's, it's scary. It's super scary. I mean, you know, the other environment that I was in, you know, people, there were all sorts of constraints, just like we face today. You know, there's money constraints and there's time constraints and there's all of those other things. There's so many, the the, uh, insecurities, the things that we feel and that we see, and we're trying to figure out how do we work within those parameters, but still are able to, you know, move ourselves forward in a big way, find those paths and create great work, do the things we really want to do. I think it's easy to get stuck. Um, what, What I often see is that somewhere around 12 years old, where up till then we have a great belief in ourselves, and we sort of say, you know what, we are capable of everything. We can do anything. And our parents and people around us are maybe supporting us. And then we quickly start to build a lot of walls around that, you know, start to maybe um, get a little bit safer in, in where we're headed and don't take as many risks. Uh, then we start to add on that layer of, okay, so what why aren't we taking as many risks? Why are we so afraid of failure? Well, of course, on the surface, there's always the it doesn't feel great, you know, when you when you go into that mode of, well, I might fail. Um, but I think deeper than that is that we really often don't prepare ourselves for what what's going to happen if we do fail. And there's a great author, uh, his name is Warren Berger, and he has uh, a book called A More Beautiful Question. 
And the thing in that in that book that's so interesting is he one of the aspects that he has is well how can we ask ourselves more interesting questions that are going to move ourselves forward because I believe that's sort of at a at a, a core point of being able to take more risks is how what if we ask more questions we're probably going to find more answers and get more comfortable but within that he actually has a question around failure that I think is absolutely brilliant so there's two ways that uh, it can be phrased and one of them is what would you try or do if you knew you couldn't fail? Ah, great coaching question. It's a great <laughs> question. And you know, that's not a bad question for everybody at home mm-hmm. to ask themselves. I ask myself that question all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're starting to be in that mode where maybe you're holding back a little bit, um, what would you do if you knew that it was still it was going to work out, it was going to be okay? Um, and then interestingly, that, that question got posed, and then uh, there's another thought leader, his name is Jonathan Fields, and he, he actually asks some extended questions from there, which I think are really important too, which is, okay, so now what if you did fail? Hmm. What if everything went wrong and it didn't work out for you? What are you going to do now? What would that look like? Okay, so what would you do next? And what would the next step be? And basically, you're starting to build a plan mentally around pulling yourself out if something really did happen. And I think that's brilliant because it really does allow us to sort of go there, go to that place that, you know, the fear is. Because the reality is it's not that, you know, people shouldn't be afraid. That's a really important aspect. But it's what do you do with the fear? And then when you are ready and you and you try it and maybe you do fail, how are you going to learn from that failure? How are you going to take that and now move forward with it? Because the reality is, and we were talking about this before, that um, the fear aspect is put in there. I mean, it is it is a biological component. You know, we have the prefrontal cortex is where all of this great thinking, everything happens. Then we have, uh, you know, the amygdala yeah. that is all that prehistoric source of being able to keep us alive. And immediately when we start to feel that fear in something, all of the blood drains away <laughs> from our great thinking and, you know, moving, moving forward. And it just goes to, you know, that flight or, fl- flight or fight component, yeah. which is, all right, what am I going to do to get myself out of this? And that's the moment where we need to be able to say, okay, we're going to take a deep breath. We're going to start to work out a strategy. We're going to figure out what's the worst thing that can happen. And then we're going to start to figure out how we're going to move this forward. You know, especially if it's something that you really, in the back of your mind, you are really interested in. You're, there's something there. Uh, and sometimes it isn't even that. But, you know, one thing I often say to people is it's in those most uncomfortable moments uh, that we get our most amazing learning. The magic happens right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And it seems counterintuitive because you just think to yourself oh come on that's I don't want to put myself there but usually nine times out of ten that is when the moment comes that you say to yourself yeah you know what okay out of that whether you succeeded or whether you failed there was great learning and it put you on a path to getting closer to where you really wanted to be and I think that's you know that's the underlying part of this um And this pressure that we feel societally to be perfect, to make sure that we don't fail, uh, is very detrimental. And I think the problem with that is that when we stop taking those risks, when we are so afraid of failing that we don't stretch out, we're doing greater damage to ourselves than we really realize you know we're standing still we're not moving forward how are we how are we going to be able to it's not just a nicety anymore particularly in the environment that we're in right now where we watch the landscape is changing maybe technology and there are other shifts that are happening so how are we going to put ourselves in the situation where we're able to flex and move with those changes and accept the fact that it's maybe not always going to work out and that's going to be okay as long as after that occurs we're able able to ask those questions. Okay, what did I learn from this? What can I take away that's going to be able to help me to move forward, especially for our children, by the way? I mean, one thing that I think we're seeing again and again, um, you know, and and I do think that this is just uh, something that's come along with the the shifts that have happened in the last sort of five to six years, and maybe a little bit further back than that. But us 
not wanting to, we want our children to succeed, of course, but we don't somehow want them to fail in between. And, and it, it doesn't work that way. We have to allow them to fail just like for ourselves in order for them to learn those critical lessons that they're going to then apply as they move forward. And it's interesting. There's a thought leader that I think you know too. His name is Seth Godin. And maybe many of your listeners are, yeah. are attached to it like I am. And he has a phrase which is, especially now, that safe is risky. Um, that idea that if I if I just kept doing the yeah. same thing, it was going to be okay. And you know what? We're in an environment now where we can't afford to just stay in the same place and think that it's, you know, that if we just do the same thing, it's going to be okay. Now that's a tough thing, right? Because at that moment, and it was funny, he was being inter- uh, interviewed by Debbie Milliman and she said, oh, that's great. So you go ahead and you tell everybody to just go stretch out, do all of these amazing things. Don't be afraid. Stand up. Let's hear your voice. Um, But she said, but now I want to know the practical side of that. How? How are you getting yourself past that fear? And he said something that I thought was really brilliant. And it was, okay, so what you're going to do every day is set small stages up for small failures. So you might have that thing out there that you see, which is grand. It's amazing. You are ambitious and you can see it. If you're feeling yourself pulling back from that and you may be gotten out of the habit of doing some things that are going to put you in that mode that you're going to start to take more risks, don't be afraid to do small risks, small risks on a small stage and chip away at that feeling because the reality is the more of those things you get under your belt the better you feel about things. So it's almost like doing your homework in a way because because I hear so often the refrain, it's not going to fail. It's going to work. I know it's going to work. It has to work. I'm going to make it work, right? right? And you hear all of this and and then when the failure happens, it's that much more disastrous because you haven't done any of the contingency planning that you were talking about. You haven't taken the smaller risks and and any of that and you've put all your eggs into one basket as it were and um and then it's a complete devastation when all the things that you had focused on fall through and don't work for whatever reason and and then you're completely left bereft and i wonder if that is um so common that that that's why the fear is so paralyzing to so many yeah, I think there's there's obviously a, a huge component in that. And I, I think for most of us, I, I know for myself, you know, it's constant work to be able to say to myself, um, and I think for everyone, <laughs> okay, I'm going to make myself uncomfortable now. Yeah. I'm going to do that thing because, of course, the human nature, as we were talking about, is no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just go and I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to, you know, maybe sit with my bunny slippers on in the corner. <laughs> and, and you know, everything is fine and that's good. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, also have comfort because obviously that's very important as well. But what I am saying is there needs to be a balance. Mm-hmm. And that the minute that we get away from that balance, we are starting to lose the ability to really move those things forward that we really care about. Mm-hmm. And I think the other thing that I should, you know, I didn't mention right at the beginning, but it was really important that when we talk about risk taking, we're not talking about physical risk. Like right. I'm not talking about, okay, let's go rock climbing. And I think you people should all start jumping off a lot of, you know, bridges and bungee jumping and everything. <laughs> Airplane jumping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All those things. You know, there's nothing wrong with those. That's great. But um, what I am saying is from one person to the next, perceived risk, right? Mm. So it's not actual physical risk, but it's what feels risky for me? Mm. What feels like there's the potential for failure for me? Mm. That's the part that really is critical. And so what you feel about something I don't feel like that's risky or I'm, I'm afraid of that at all, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's really important to remember because the framing and the reframing around what you are capable of should never be based just on what somebody else is capable of. It doesn't matter. That's not where it comes from. What come, what it comes from is back to what we were saying, those practices and those trades of, okay, so now what am I adding into my toolkit of things that are going to, Um, basically build muscles. You know, one thing I always say is this idea around building curiosity, building our muscles and uh, taking those small steps every day. 
which sounds pretty normal. You think, oh, yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. But it's a practice like anything else. You really have to set your mind to it. And you have to say, okay, I am going to do this. And sometimes you might even need an accountability partner to be able Mm -hmm. to help you with that, to make sure that you're actually staying on track if it's something important to you and you want to make sure that, you know, you have a goal, you want to stay on the other end. Of course, that's, you know, a a great way to do it. Um, You know, I think an interesting thing, just this past weekend, my parents celebrated their 50th anniversary. And at that event, I was wandering around, I was having conversations with uh, a whole bunch of people in that room. And, you know, the, the people in that room were a little bit older. And what I realized very quickly was that they did not have the same perspective around uh, risk taking and f- and fear of failure that a lot of people like even in our age category and then younger do, which is they had accepted a long time ago that there was going to be messiness. Uh, it was not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. You were then things were going to go wrong. They mm-hmm. and that was just accepted. There wasn't this this um, grabbing onto that it was going to be perfect and that everything was. I thought that was very interesting. So you know, there's a there's that that difference in age they didn't expect for it to work out no like who said it was ever going to and I know I find that too in my congregation that um sometimes the um the changes that have to happen are more easily and more readily accepted by the elderly generation and you know people might people might um wonder at that but I have found um people that are 70 and 80 and up seem to be far more resilient and far more able to roll with the punches than even some of the baby boomer generation with some of the things. And I wonder when that shift began to happen. And I, I find it fascinating because um, you know, as, as Seth Godin says many times and, and other people um, have been saying, um, this is the new reality. Like we are in a constant state of change. That is normal. Yeah. And so the idea that was around in the 50s that, you know, 40s and 50s that, you know, uh, this is how life is, uh, is gone. Yeah. And I I think, I think, but I think what we can do now, and I love the fact that you brought up resiliency, Mm because that's directly, obviously related to everything that happens around fear fear of failure and, you know, risk taking and stretching out. Um, And one thing you find, whether it's from the elderly category Mm -hmm. or really successful people, when you start to look at that, you see this uh, knowledge that is, yeah, I know I'm going to fail. Yeah. I'm actually, I expect that I'm going to fail. And then the question becomes, great, what did I learn from that <laughs> failure? And how can I use that to move myself forward, as we were kind of talking about before? And I think that's that's a really interesting thing. And I, you know, I often say at some of the um, discussions that I have, hey, you know what? Edison, when he was, you know, <laughs> he had gone through like thousands, in fact, 10,000 times yeah. trying to figure out how to make a light bulb all of a sudden he said oh no I didn't fail I just found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb you know (laughs) and I think that that thought span is very true around many many successful people Mm -hmm. and they just say hey you know what this is fine now we're going to take that learning we're going to move we're going to utilize it to move ourselves forward and that is really really critical so in this whole arena around resiliency uh which we know there's an old test that's called this uh the stanford marshmallow test it goes back like 20 years and they took all these kids who were like four years old and they said okay so you can have a marshmallow now or if you wait you could have two marshmallows Mm -hmm. and then they go out of the room and then they come back and if they the the thing that was so interesting about that was 20 years later those kids that were able to wait and get the second marshmallow their long-term success much much higher than everybody else's I thought that was like a really interesting thing so that idea around okay I'm gonna have to wait to see what happens I'm gonna have to put the time in to be able to you know make something move forward um and that directly linked to this whole arena around resiliency so the idea so now the question is if we know that bouncing back is so incredibly important and that ability to pick ourselves up and say okay so what am I going to do now 
there's some things, there's a, there's a really simple question you can ask yourself, uh, which I often get people to do, which is, okay, so if you're stuck and you're at that moment where it's not working out, ask yourself, what's the smallest, just tiniest, most minute thing that I could do around this situation? What's the thing that's just so easy? It's just ridiculous. Okay. Now go to the opposite side. What's the biggest, most audacious, ridiculous <laughs> thing that you could ever imagine doing around that situation? Great. You got those two things. Now, what are some of those other things that fit in between those that you could do? To kind of like this? goal setting in a way, it right? Is, Dreaming your big, big G yeah. goal at the end and, and what do you have to do to get there? Yeah. Except with the actionable side yes. to it. You really want yeah. it to be like a verb. It's like, yeah. okay, so what am I, what can, what you can do? happen? What, what, what can you do? Mm -hmm. um, and so what can you do? There, here's, here's some things for your toolkit to work on. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting, there was a University of Illinois study that came out. They did it with students, but it applies to everybody. And that is around community service, mm. which they found that for those individuals who, instead of just doing individualized risk-taking, so whatever that was in society, if they shifted their energy towards doing community service projects, that they still felt like that was a risk because they had to stretch out, they had to you know meet new people and put themselves in unusual situations. If they did those things, they were much more likely to experience long-term success, hmm. they were also more likely to experience less depression. Interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. I thought there's a tool and the ability to actually give back, you know, more so than receiving, and that having a totally bigger long-term success effect. I think that's, wow, how could you ask for something more? There's exactly. two things, you know, in one. So that was one part of it. One of the other things that I, I thought were really, uh, was really interesting, there was a TED Talk uh, by Amy Cuddy, and she was talking about power poses. And on the surface, you did, when you watch, started watching, you think, just, oh, seriously? <laughs> but the research suggests that if you are in a situation where maybe you're afraid, you're like, you want to take that risk, you want to stretch out, but you're just not sure. They did it in interview situations. And they actually had people do physical poses. So, for instance, putting your hands on your hips, standing there and doing that for a few seconds, that those things elevated testosterone levels. They, they did all sorts of other, uh, you know, components that now said, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm going to take this on. So she, she said, you know, it's that fake it till you make it sort of. Yeah. Uh, idea. And I thought, wow, there's a small thing that we could all do if we're in that situation. We're kind of unsure. We're maybe on the border. We don't know if we're going to stretch out. Okay, great. You know, it's, it's instantaneous. I can do it right now. That, well, yeah. And your body is so, um, is so fascinating because one of the exercises that, that I've done in NLP training is, um, is to sit down and to throw your hands up in the air and look up at the sky and try and feel sad while you're in that pose. And then the other one is to curl up into a little ball on your lap, sitting in a chair, but curl up into a little ball in your lap with your head down and try and feel happy. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting that those are harder things to feel when you're in those particular poses yeah. because your body communicates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there is a great book that I use all the time, both for myself and with people that I'm coaching. It's called Steal Like an Artist from Austin Cleon. And it's funny because if you look at the title, it's a, apparently it's about trying to improve your creativity which I'm all about too. But the interesting thing about it, it really is a guidebook for taking risks and stretching <laughs> out and moving yourself and your ideas forward. And what's so interesting uh, in his book, there's one thing that he says, which is, you know, don't wait till you have all the answers, basically, to decide that you're going to, you know, make a move, which totally makes sense. But most of us, I think, are pretty, including myself, you know, oh, I think I need a little more research. I got to find yeah. out a little bit more. Read another book. Read another book, all of those things. <laughs> Listen no. to another podcast. <laughs> Listen to another podcast. That's right. No, here, you know, what I'm saying and what he's saying is, okay, now is the time. You know enough. You have enough from your own strengths, loves, passions, and hobbies. Those very things that you already hold, mm -hmm. which I absolutely believe most of us put those to the side. We don't utilize them nearly enough as the starting point. It's easy to look out side and say, 
it's overwhelming. There is too much going on. I, it's a black hole. I don't even know where the first place I would start is. That's exactly what you need to do is turn it around, go back inside, say, I already have what I need. Now I'm going to use that as the, the strength, the starting point for this. And then uh, one of the other things he said that I think is so brilliant is uh, what's the book that you would want to write? <laughs> And I think whether it's the book you want to write or the path you want to take, whatever it is, it's a, that's a great question to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. Forget about what everyone else is interested in or saying you should do, but what, what's that starting point? And while that may not sound like traditional stretching out in terms of risk, it is because you basically are facing like, okay, this is the thing I really care about. And now I'm going to use that to take action and move myself forward. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, those are great starting points, you know, mm-hmm. for anybody and simple, right? It doesn't take a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of time. So for everybody out there who's saying to themselves, I, I don't even know how I would get started. There's a couple of things right away that you can do. No problem. You know, (laughs) as a a matter of fact, you know, there's um, some things currently on my site as far as challenges. Uh, Yeah, tell us about the the (laughs) 30-day risk challenge. I love this. Yeah, Yeah. 30-day risk challenge. So 30, just over 30 days ago, I decided I was going to put my money where my mouth is. And I was, I'm going to take on this one risk every day, big or small. What's that going to be like? How hard is it going to be? What's it going to feel like? All of those things. So I started and I have to say it was a lot tougher than I thought (laughs) and not not from a negative standpoint from a really great standpoint the thing was that just being able to be present and decide what that risk was going to be every day and it you know you you actually have to do a little bit of an analysis on what's happening in your life and you you know some days it was as small as okay that's it I'm going to the supermarket and I'm going to try something that I've never tried before and other days uh you know it was okay well I've just agreed that I'm going to do a speech about you know this and I don't even know where I'm going to start um and you know I actually one thing I ended up doing was in front of my children's school I put on a dolphin hat and I danced around with all the kids that were there to make sure that they, you know, had a little extra team spirit going. So (laughs) I'd like to see the dolphin hat. (laughs) It was was quite good. So there was, there was lots of great things. And the takeaway from that, um, it really helped. It was, it was one thing every day and Mm. it was enough to be able to sort of go, okay, uh, I can use this now as a leverage point and maybe I won't do it every day now, but it will be top of mind. It will make me realize that there's the ability to to put myself in those situations and that no matter what happens, it's going to be okay on the other side of it, right? That's right. It so is. where can people find you and find this uh, the information on... Uh on the 30 day risk challenge. Yeah, on the 30 day risk challenge, uh, both that and I also have a risk takers action sheet, which is just a first four questions you can get started. They're both in my blog post at um, www.ovisionconsulting.com. And um, just, you know, you take a look there and all the information is there so you can um, take it, use it, get started. That's the thing, right? This is all about taking those first actions, those first steps, no matter how small they are, doesn't matter. Yeah. We're not worried about anyone else. You know, one thing I want to say to you, just as we're kind of starting to wind things up, a couple of weeks back, and you know this, I had seen a commencement speech from um, this Harvard grad. His name is Casey Gerald. And he said something that struck me really, really heavily. And he said he felt like, uh, as, as a nation, as an area, that maybe we'd gotten into a bit of a place that was like a dream depression Mm. that and I thought that was really wow really really heavy and he said I think people are hiding their real wants um, their real abilities and their dreams because of the uncertainty so basically that idea that we aren't maybe taking as many risks we aren't stretching out as far um, we we're, aren't, we're, we're not dreaming, we're not dreaming as uh-huh. big as, as we need to. Mm. And that even when we see all these constraints, I think we really have to start working on, okay, what's that one small thing I'm going to do to move this forward, no matter what, 
we hear is going on around us because we can't you know it's tough I know some days it feels overwhelming but it's that one small thing what are you going to what are you going to use for yourself to move you forward and it doesn't have to be big and it doesn't have to be hard but just getting into that practice Um, and I think that's that's a great place to start because for myself I look at it and I think okay how are we going to get everybody doing more great work more of the things they really want to do anyway Uh, and I think that's at the core of it it really is both for ourselves and our children Uh, you know if you look at how everything is moving forward so incredibly quickly as we referenced before it is absolutely critical for us to be bigger dreamers more curious bigger risk takers all of those things are at the core of us being able to really get where we want to be and do the things that matter most to us and and to actually take the step and do it because you know it was like it was like the podcasting adventure Uh, anybody who's listened to episode one that was 10 minutes and pretty terrible it was uh you know it was just do it you know, I, I see all these people around me who haven't started their podcast and who are waiting until they have taken all the courses and they've got all the right equipment and they, you know, they've, you know, been to all the seminars and all this stuff. And and you can be paralyzed by gathering information and by learning as much as you can. And, you know, it's a good excuse. Oh, well, I'm not going to do that until I've done A, B, and C. And and then you never do it. Mm-hmm. And and I've seen that over and over and over again. And my the advice that was given to me was just do it. Yeah. And you'll <clears throat> figure it out as you go. And yes, it's risky. And yes, it's scary. And maybe nobody will listen to you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, but it's like just start. Yeah. And, and like you say, take some step every day and, and see what happens. Yeah. There's one last thought that I'd love Mm -hmm. to leave everybody with. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I uh, had sort of seen along the way. And it was failure is rarely absolute. (laughs) I thought that was a really great reminder if we're going to leave for all of us that, you know, there are very few circumstances in this world where if you fail at something that it's really going to be like, you can't fix it or there's no way out of it. 99% of what we're going to take on or try, we're going to be able to find a solution or find a way out. It's, you know, it's going to, but for ourselves, it's getting past that and realizing, okay, it's going to be okay, no matter what we try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great to talk to you again, Lynn. You too, Jen. (laughs) It was awesome. And uh, I hope all your listeners, you know, get out, stretch out take those uh take those little steps yeah absolutely and we'll put all of your contact information on the website at communicationdiva.com and uh, things that you've referenced as well i hope that um that you get out there and uh and try some stuff and listen to lynn's advice and go over to her blog and get yourself the sheet with the questions and uh and check out all the exciting things that she's doing as well and uh thanks again yeah thank you all right great So thanks for listening, everyone. I thought that was a wonderful session with Lynn. We could have talked for another full hour, I'm sure. And uh, and even though this was our second run at it, I think this time it was even better than the last time. We uh, touched on all the key points that uh, she had talked about last time with a few extras thrown in. So be sure to come over to the uh, show notes at communicationdiva.com. Leave us some comments. Check out all the things that she talked about. I'll put links and, uh, and at least mention the names of some of the books and resources that she gave. And would love to hear from you. If you'd like to go over to iTunes, find the Communication Diva podcast and give us a rating and a review. The more people that do that, the more people will find Communication Diva. And I really appreciate you taking the time out to take a listen and to be here with us this day and uh, all the other times that maybe you've listened. I uh, really, really value um, your participation in this community. So thanks again. I'm, uh, I'm off to a silent retreat figure that out a podcaster going off to a silent retreat for about seven days and uh and so i'm going to be by lake i'm going to be uh you know having the hard agenda of eating and sleeping and praying and swimming and hiking and being all by myself for seven days uh, in the company of others but at the same time all by myself um, and uh, spending a little time with the divine so I'm excited about that, going to decompress a little, and I hope that all sorts of wonderful ideas will come to me while I am uh, lying there looking up at the clouds. So until we talk again, 
take good care and uh, and join the conversation.